Center here in Cleveland, Ohio, at the 49th annual Piston Powered Autorama. We are having a great time out here. There are there are a ton of cars out here. If you like cars, there is not a car that I can see in the place that is not fantastic. So come on out today. We are going to be broadcasting live until 10 o'clock tonight. Again tomorrow from 10 a.m. till 10 p.m. and on Sunday from 10 until 6. Come on out. I promise. You are going to have fun, fun, fun. Right now, this is the Beach Boys here at Witsy 1260 Online, the heart and soul of rock and roll. Mark Allen holding down the fort. Gee, is that you on there? <laughs> yeah. Back in the day, right? It is. Yes, it is. He said he had the other ones, but I don't know where they are. Okay. You know, the other, the other right. sheets that... Yeah. We'll find them. How the tides have turned, huh? That's okay. Uh, yeah. Funny. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. Uh, it looks funny to someone else using their camcorder. Got a big enough battery on this thing? <laughs> That's what I should have to argue about. Crazy. That thing lasts for three hours. It's huge. I need it. We can do a wedding. Need something like that. That's a good still right there. Yep. Ah! Ugly <laughs> So serious. Say something, Z-Man. <laughs> yes, sir. We see 60. Keeps on trucking. We're gone, man. Online. 
and everybody's got to have a little good love. And here we are at the, at the 49th annual IX Center Rock and Roll Show. Well, we like to call it a rock and roll show. It's actually the uh, car show. And thanks to Lisa Jordan, I'm Mark Allen. She let me get back in here. We have a very, very well-known guest who's been on the radio all over the country. You may remember him on the night train at WGAR years ago. He's also been on Sirius XM many years on Sirius Gold Channel 5 and also on WCBS FM in New York 101 and many other things. Norm Ann Knight is with us today and uh, Norm, it's good to see you again, buddy. Well, it's wonderful being here. I'm telling you, what a group of people that you have working for and keeping the sound of Wixie 1260 alive and well. Congratulations to each and every one of you. Thank you so much, Norm. And of course, uh, you know, you're a guy that just never says uh, the, the sunset has arrived. You've always got something new. I understand you're working on the new book. Can you tell me about that, Norm? Well, you know, it's interesting that my first book, Rock On, came out in November of 74. So that's over 40 years ago. And there have been eight different publications. But one of the book, uh, uh, books I wanted to do for the longest time Next year will be the 30th anniversary that Cleveland got the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Cleveland was awarded the Hall of Fame on May 5th of 1986. So I talked to my editor in New York and I said, you know what, I'd love to be able to do the book on how it all came about because there were so many fascinating stories about how this transpired. So we got the blessing from the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, which was wonderful to be able to say, go ahead, and we got the official book. And we'll be, I'm going to be sitting down with a writer in New Jersey, Brian Amberback, and uh, we are going to be able to put this book together by, uh, my agent right now in New York is putting the uh, finishing touches to the proposal, and we've got about 20 different publishing houses in New York that are, are looking at it. We hope to have a publisher name soon. And be able to tell the story because it is so fascinating about how these little things, because this all started really back around 1981, 82 here in Cleveland, when I was talking to a gentleman by the name of Hank Lacani, who had a dream about putting a Hall of Fame here in Cleveland. And all the things that transpired over the years that made it happen that Cleveland was awarded the Hall of Fame in 1986, and now it's been already, uh, since 1995, 20 years since September since it opened, and already over 10 million people have come to Cleveland because of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And uh, again, so, We'll keep you in tune as far as what's going on of the development of the book and all the different people we'll be talking to and interviewing, and it's going to be so many different things in this book you won't believe, and I'm really excited about it, but you're the first to hear about it, and uh, uh, hopefully next May of uh, 2016, we'll be able to celebrate and talk about that book. So there you go, you got it from the horse's mouth, that's Norman Knight talking about another book. He already has, I think, seven of them, eight, <laughs> eight books, he's already got eight books out on various parts of music and he knows everybody. I've seen this guy's I've seen this guy's little black book. It's like a like a big phone book. He's got everybody's number and their their days that uh, of their birth dates and that sort of thing. And of course these eight wonderful books. Now a new one coming out next year and uh, that's just great though. We're so glad to hear it. Stay with us, we'll play a little bit of music and then we'll talk a little bit more about your involvement with the uh, uh, how the rock and roll hall came to Cleveland. You're listening to Wixie 1260 online. Hey, it's a punctuation song. Now I'm going to do down. Break it up, it's hard to do this. It's Neil Sinek at Wixie 1260 online. Mark Allen, one of the original Wixie 1260 DJs. So proud to be here at the IX Center show with one of the greats. One of the greats of Cleveland Broadcasting. A real professional and a very nice man, Mr. Norman Knight. Norm, there's an anniversary coming up here until me tomorrow. What's uh, that? The birth of rock and roll occurred here in Cleveland, Ohio on Friday. March 21st, 1952, so tomorrow will commemorate 63 years that Alan Freed decided Leo Mintz from Record Rendezvous to do a show at the Cleveland Arena. That was a spark that ignited rock and roll, and the rest is history. And I'm very, very honored to be able to say that on March 24, January 23rd, 1986, in New York at the very first induction ceremony, that myself and other with a legendary disc jockey, Scott Muley, were able to induct Alan Freed into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And it was a terrific honor for me to be able to be up on stage at the Waldorf inducting Alan Freed into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. But again, tomorrow marks the birth of rock and roll here in Cleveland 63 years ago. 
Boy, I'll tell you, Norton has all the information. You know, one thing I've always noticed about Norman Knight, this man is a true professional, been in the business for many, many years, but rarely, rarely says anything about himself. A few months ago, we were all down in Canton at the Rhythm and Blues Hall of Fame, and Norman Knight was the guy inducted into the Rhythm and Blues Hall of Fame down in Canton, Ohio. Norman, of course, as I said, was on Sirius Gold Channel 5, Sirius XM. He's also a member of the Night Train on WGAR. And of course, WCBS FM 101 in New York has other things. Now, Norm, I know you're a private guy and you don't like to brag about yourself, but I want to drag you out because I know this, and other people don't know, that you had so much to do with the fact that the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is here in Cleveland, Ohio. Please tell me a little. I know the brownstone in New York was all set, and you started making phone calls. Well, you know, I'll try to capsulize it in a, in a very, very brief way. Uh, but what happened was this, that a, it was in 1982 that I got a phone call from uh, Hank Riccardi and he said, I know you're in New York and you're doing things, everything else. He kept talking about the Hall of Fame. Well, we started putting together a board in New York City in 1983 and 84. And then uh, people in Cleveland found out that there were people that were working on putting the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame together in New York City. And Hank Licotti called me up and he said, could you come to Cleveland? And I did in May of 85. And I met at that particular time with uh, Mike Benz and, uh, and uh, Bill Smith, who was the station manager at WMMS, and uh, Jules Belton and just a lot of people. And they asked me, they said, do you think that you could talk to Abba Eric and the chairman of the board of the Hall of Fame about considering Cleveland for the site to, for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? And I said, well, I'll try, I, I can't promise anything. I flew back to New York, called up Ahmed. I said, may I go uh, have a meeting with you? And he said, sure. And it was in May of 85, I walked into his office, we sat down to talk, and I said, would you consider Cleveland as a site for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? And he said, absolutely not, because Mayor Koch has a place above, figured out for us a brownstone on 42nd Street, and that's where we're gonna build the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And if I had gotten up, shook his hand, and walked out the door, we'd be visiting the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in a two or four-story brownstone in New York. But for some reason or other, I just couldn't take that no for an answer. I stood up and I said, consider Alan Freed, consider the Moon Dog, consider the neutral city. It's between Chicago, Detroit, Pittsburgh, and everything else. I must have hit the right button, because he told Susan Evans in the outer office, Susan, when's our next meeting for the board? She said, July 18th. He says, tell Norman that uh, his people can come to New York and pitch the Hall of Fame. I came back to Cleveland. I told the people they came here out to New York City in July 18th of 85. And again, they, they worked very, very hard, all the people here in Cleveland. And on May 5th, 1986, we were awarded the Hall of Fame. So my, the point I'm trying to make in this is this. If you believe in something, never take no for an answer. Because if I had taken no for an answer on that wonderful day that we met, Again, the Hall of Fame would be in a, on 42nd Street in New York City. Isn't that a great story, everybody? A lot of folks have never heard that story, and I've heard it before, and I, I just can't get over it, that this one man has done so much for our business, for the music that we love, and Cleveland's Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Let's have a round of applause here for Mr. Music! But again, I want to say, Bob and Lisa and all the people that are here from uh, representing Wixie 1260, a legendary station in this market. The unfortunate thing for me is when Wixie was at its prime, those were the years that I was, I was out of town because, first of all, I left Cleveland in 1961 to attend Ohio University for four years in 1965. After that, I went into the military as an Army officer from 1965 to 1967. And then after that, I was working in uh, a little bit here in, in Cleveland, but then I went off to New York. So all that wonderful time that was spent here with Wixie, I was never around really except when I came home for the holidays to listen to all those legendary disc jockeys that were on the air at that time. But I'm very proud to say that you folks are doing a phenomenal job, and all the people that have ever been affiliated, both on the air or behind the scenes with Wixie, I'm sure are very, very proud of the job that you're doing to keep this wonderful legend of Wixie 1260 alive. My hat's off to you. Continued success. May you all rock on forever. Thank you. Thank you, Norman Knight. Of course, Norm, uh, you know, I go back to Wixie. I was known as Mark Allen back in those days because of a not compete. And if we turned the clock back for me 40 years, and I'm having a great time playing Wixie 1260. Once again, thank you, Mr. Music, Norman Knight. Lisa, more music here's Wixie 1260 online. That was so nice.
nice. Thank you all. Thank